how does the Old Testament priesthood prefigure the new? Like, how, how does the Old Testament, when you, when you read about the priesthood in the Old Testament, is there any similarities between the Old Testament and the New Testament priesthood? So there's three priesthoods. There's the natural law priesthood, the Mosaic Levitical priesthood, and then the priesthood of Christ. That's it. So the, the, the natural law priesthood, a lot of people will skip this. They don't understand it. But Paul goes over it in, in Hebrews and it's hinted in Galatians. So in the Old Testament before Moses, the priesthood passed from father to son. You see this in the, in the patriarchs. You see it with Abraham and the story of Isaac. You see it with Jacob and Esau. You see it with the squabbling of the brothers under Jacob, who's called Israel. It's all throughout the Old Testament. It's the law of the primogenitor, the firstborn, and this transfer of power, authority, land, wealth, and sacrificial blessing upon the son. Multiple sons or usually one son who's then kind of the high priest, the bishop of the other sons who were more like priests. That's, that's the original priesthood that God instituted with Adam and Eve. Father, son, priesthood. Now that you know that, you think, okay, this is a echo of the Holy Trinity, the Father and the Son and their union of love, which is the Holy Spirit. All right, so there's a Trinitarian understanding to priesthood that's already in natural law. What happened when the Israelites worshipped the golden calf? Originally, if you read the text, all the firstborn of Israel were going to be the priests. It's one reason why yeah. God killed the firstborn in Egypt as a dis. And then he's like, now the firstborn of Israel are going to be priests. But when they worship the golden calf, Moses said, who was zealous for the Lord? He put a line in the sand and said, who serves the Lord? Who, who is against idolatry? And the Levites ran to Moses. And then what did Moses say to them? Today you have ordained yourselves priests of God. So what happened is, is beginning with Moses God said, hey, that whole thing of the firstborn is over. I'm only choosing the Levites. But that was a temporary situation until the time of Christ. Christ comes, and when he's baptized, he, God says from heaven, when the dove of the Holy Ghost comes down, behold my son in whom I'm well pleased. And we learn that Christ is the suffering servant. He is the high priest. Because he is a Levite? No, Jesus is not a Levite. He's a Judahite. He's from Judah. The reason Jesus is priest is not, he's saying the Levitical system is over and it's broken. He's returning to the natural law priesthood of father to son, except this time his father is not Joseph. It's God the father. And therefore he is perfectly the priest. And therefore he can... He can bring about all the atonement, all the redemption, and make an eternal and new covenant. So what Christ does is he returns the priesthood back to the firstborn. So Thomas Aquinas says in the new covenant, there's only one priest. Christ. Jesus. Jesus Christ. And he says that the new covenant priests, of which Thomas Aquinas was one, are, are priests in that they participate in the priesthood of Christ. By participation, strictly speaking, although they have a character that can never be erased, they are metaphysically transformed in their souls to be priests, conform to Jesus Christ. Their priesthood is only in Christ. This is why they offer mass, not in their own name, but in persona Christi. Now, is, so, is this why Christ is said to be a, a priest in the line of Melchizedek? Because Melchizedek was part of that natural law priesthood exactly yeah melchizedek is a natural law line right exactly that's exactly right the the uh, the authors of the new testament the apostles have zero interest in trying to convince jews hey jesus is really priestly you should be down with his priesthood why because he's a levite no they are stressing over and over he is not a levite the levitical priesthood is busted it's a now, temporary where broken system when we have because a, a lot of times protestants will say you don't see priests in the, in the new testament and like how, do we have uh like what is the basis in script because i mean as a catholic we would say well the whole reason for the old testament priesthood was to foreshadow the the new testament priesthood 
is there are there things in scripture that we could point to if a protestant brings that up or something like that so there's there's two really good texts to go to the first one is romans 15 16 most protestant translations disguise this verse so if you're using their book they're not going to see it. So you got to get him to go to the Greek or show him a Catholic. It says, Paul in Romans 15, 16 says, he is a minister of Christ Jesus. They like calling Paul a minister because they call their own guys minister. So that's yeah. okay. A minister of Christ Jesus with the priestly duty. Oh, wow. Proclaiming the gospel of God. And that word priestly there is the same word used for Old Testament priests. And the same oh, word for wow. Jesus. Jesus. For a priest. So you have to oh, ask yeah. yourself, well, Paul, he, and it's Herus, Herus, where we get the word hierarchy from, Herus. Why does Paul see himself as a Herus, as a, as a priest? Because he is one. Yeah. Not that he is a priest in his own right. Cause see the Levitical priests were priests because their daddy was a priest, right? Yes. Yeah. The new covenant priests don't get it through generation they get it by being in the one who is only begotten of the father by being connected to him through a sacrament that's how they get the priesthood the other text you can take him to is the book of the apocalypse the book of revelation and there around the throne of god are 24 elders now the word there for elder is presbyteros which is the word you that we get priest from, but it means elder. But the reason that there's 24 elders or presbyteroi is because the priesthood in, Le in Leviticus was divided into 24 sections because Aaron, the high priest, original high priest, had 24 grandsons. So there is 24 divisions in the Old Testament priesthood. And in the book of Revelation, once again, you have Jesus, high priest, 24 priests, but it uses the word used in the New Testament, presbyter, elder. And so right there, I mean, even as a, as a Protestant, when I was learning Greek and I was seeing some of the things, I was like, hmm, that's a little <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, why, why in the New Testament are there 24 presbyters dressed in priestly garments offering incense at an altar with the Lamb of God on it. All of that looks super Old Testament, and yet it's all New Testament, which is not Now, now speaking of that, because what... Um, so Moses has uh, 72 around him. Now, did, wasn't the College of Cardinals originally 72? Like, wasn't... I think that was the number originally, and then they started expanding on that around the time of the council, right? Well, so originally... 